to share a message and a series entitled uh, The Kingdom Lifestyle and Principles. Tunaongea juu ya the uh, kingdom lifestyle and principles. Na huu ni ujumbe ambao I'm excited as I share. Na kwa hivyo the Holy Spirit has quickened me to be able to share what God put in my heart and what has helped me this far. Because I believe in this kingdom, there is a lifestyle and a lifestyle I want to refer that in every kingdom, there is a culture. I mean, I, maybe that is the word because we know in our family, in our tribal backgrounds, uh, we have those kacha ambazo tunazifuatilia hizo tamaduni na kwa hivyo kila ufalme uko na tamaduni zake na pia uko na principles principles ndizo zinafanya ule ufalme ukaweze kuwa vile ulivyo ama ukaweze kufanya kazi na ningependa kusema ya kwamba uh, Yesu alipokuja hapa duniani na akaweza kuhubiri aliweza kuhubiri juu ya ufalme wa Mungu. In fact, uh, hili jina kingdom limekuwa referred katika the New Testament uh, mara moja na hamsini. Kwa hivyo limetajwa kuliko hata vile unaweza sema kanisa imetajwa Yesu aliongea juu ya ufalme. Na kwa hivyo kile ambacho alichotuletea ni ufalme. If you read the book of Luke chapter 22 and verse 29 utaona ya kwamba kile Yesu alikuwa anataka ama kile alichotuletea ni ufalme the bible says and i bestow you I, and i bestow upon you a kingdom just as my father bestowed one upon me so ye hapa ni Yesu Kristo anasema and i bestow you I, and i bestow upon you a kingdom just as my father bestowed one upon me. Can you give us the same scripture in New Living Transition? And just as my father has granted me a kingdom, I now grant you the right. So, Jesus came to give us the right to become partakers of the kingdom. He did not come to give us the right to be partakers of a religious institution. He came to give us the right to be partakers of the kingdom. That is why ata ukiangalia in prayer, if you look at Matthew chapter 6 um, and verse 10, utaona ya kwamba Yesu alipokuwa na wafundisha wanafunzi wake kuomba, alisema ya kwamba, number one, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That should be the prayer of every believer. That, oh God, let your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that should be our prayer. Na Yesu wakaendrea kusema in Matthew 6.33. Uh, one of our key scriptures here is a ministry. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things things uh, will be given to you as well. That you seek the kingdom first and his righteousness or to have a right standing in that kingdom so that you may become a partaker of the blessings uh, of the kingdom. Na kwa siku ya leo ama usiku wa leo ningependa kuweka msingi Na kuna mambo kadhaa ningependa tujifundishe kutoka kwa neno la Mungu. And if you have your Bible or you want to write some of these scriptures, I believe you can be able to look at them even at your own time because I believe they carry a lot of weight and they can help us to change our mindset even concerning the church. I know there are so many questions today. Why is the church not having the impact that God intended from the beginning. Like in Kenya, we are 80% Christians. But we don't have an impact. Why? Because we don't have a, a kingdom lifestyle. Neither do we understand the principles 
of this kingdom. Whereas Jesus said, uh, it has been given unto you to understand the mysteries or the secrets of this kingdom. So many people, even some of us who are preaching, I don't say that I know everything. But at least we need to know some of the mysteries that becomes keys in our lives to help us be able to enjoy. Because this is a grand kingdom. This is a majestic kingdom. This is a kingdom that is full of life and beauty. But sometimes when you look at us and you look at our churches, it's like there is a lot of cold. Huh? Ni kama kuna baridi, ni kama kuna kifo, ni kama kuna huzuni. But the kingdom of God is grand, majestic, full of life and beauty. But what we are experiencing now is not the kingdom. We are experiencing and we have turned the kingdom of God and the Bible into a religion. May God have mercy upon us. And I believe if there is something that God is going to do in this season, is to help people to go back to the gospel of the kingdom. And I'll be sharing that. Because Jesus said in the book of Matthew 24, 14, when he was talking about the last days, Jesus said, uh, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Which gospel will be preached? It is the gospel of the kingdom. We'll come back to that later and see that there are so many kinds of gospel. Huh? And it depends on the kind of gospel you have received. Some people have stagnated. They are living a life without results. Nothing to show. Because uh, we have not yet understood that Jesus has called us that we may become partakers of the kingdom. Not to become partakers of religious rituals. He has called us to be partakers of the kingdom. What we are about there are 80% Christians. Wamebatizwa ni walevi. Wamebatizwa. Nani? Nani yanafanya mambo haya machafu yote Kenya? Ambayo yanafanywa ulevi, wizi, ukahaba, hata ushoga. Nani yanafanya mambo haya machafu? He corruption ambayo imejaa kila mahali si inafanywa na John na James na Peter watu waliobatizwa watu ambao utawakuta katika ibada Jumapili but where is the kingdom lifestyle where is the culture of the kingdom the culture of the kingdom is speaking the truth the culture of the kingdom is loving your enemies the culture of the kingdom is forgiving those who have trespassed against you. That is our lifestyle. Our lifestyle in this kingdom is giving. Our lifestyle in this kingdom is prayer and fasting. Because men will not live on bread alone. Where is the culture of the kingdom? In the church today. And that is where we are falling short. And there are so many questions why we cannot see God at work. Because we need restoration of kingdom lifestyle. So many believers have gone back to their kikuyu kacha, ruo kacha, ruya kacha. Unakuta mtu wako kanisa ni jumapili. Hata ni mzee wa kanisa. Lakini ikifika ni kutairisha mtoto, anarudi kwa kacha yake. Badala akubali. Because the kingdom of God when you become part of that, this kingdom, it involves unlearning what you had learned huh? in the other kingdom or in your culture and learn the kingdom lifestyle. That is what the Bible says in the book of uh, 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 Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. If we can read Romans very quickly, verse 1 and 2. I'm trying to lay a foundation that we must unlearn old patterns 
and relearning new patterns of thought and behavior. The Bible says, therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy, pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. The pattern of this world is the culture, is the lifestyle. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Haba tunaona ya kwamba, Bibina tuambia kwamba, lazima tuondoke kwa system ya ulimwengu. Lazima tuondoke kwa lifestyle, kwa kacha. That we should not be conformed, but we should be transformed. So when we come to this kingdom, we should be able to unlearn some of the things we learned when we were living worldly lives and relearn new things. Change our thought patterns. Change our behavior. So that we may be able to live now the kingdom lifestyle and employ kingdom principles in our lives uh, so that we can be able to get results. And we, have, we can show the world, see that I belong to a kingdom that gives you results. A kingdom that is powerful and has impact in every area of my life. Ningetaka niseme ya kwamba, one of the greatest enemies of a kingdom is not the devil. One of the greatest enemies of the kingdom is religion. Ask yourself, who killed Jesus? Nani alimuwa Yesu? If you read the book of um, Matthew chapter 26 from verse 57, utona ya kwamba ni nani walie muwa Yesu? Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas. Who was he? The high priest. Where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. But Peter followed at him at a distance right up to the courtyard of the high priest. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests, look at this, the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin, I will explain the meaning of Sanhedrin, were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. So who wanted to put Jesus to death? It is a chief priest, ni makwani waku, wa wayahudi, and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and declared, this Pharaoh said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said, Jesus, are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you at the oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, in the future, you see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the crowds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now you have heard the blasphemy. Mm -hmm. What do you think? He is worthy of death. They answered. Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him. Tunaona mambo yale ambayo hapa yaliweza Yesu aliweza kufanyiwa. In fact, ukiangalia maisha ya Yesu hapa duniani, Yesu hakuwa na shida na wenye dhambi. But he had a great problem with the religious system kwa sababu ndio alikuwa anakuja kuiondoa I repress na watu kufunguliwa mlango wa kuingia ufalme wa binguni. 
Na Yesu alikuwa anasema, "Mbona mnasimama katika mrango? Hamuingi ndani na hamuondoki ili wale wanataka kuingia wakaweze kuingia." Ukisoma bibi yako vizuri, utaona ya kwamba the Sanhedrin ilikuwa inawakilisha 71 elders ambao walikuwa na the chief high priest wakati huo ambaye alikuwa anaitwa Kaifas. Na hii walikuwa may generator from Moses in the book of Numbers 11:16 mahali ambapo Musa aliambiwa achague 70 elders. So the 70 plus him they became 71. So later they formed the Sanhedrin. Walikope from Moses the lord said to moses bring me 70 of israel elders who are known to you as leaders and officials among the people have them come to the tent of the meeting that they may stand there with you tunajua ya kwamba the lord said to moses bring me 70 of israel elders who are known to you as leaders so they were appointed to be leaders together with moses so the sanhedrin dio waliendeleza from that time kukawa na 70 elders plus now the high priests ambaye wakati huo alikuwa Kaifas huyo ndiye alikuwa the de facto leaders of the Jews because this time they were under the Roman empire na kwa hivyo yeye ndiye ni kama alikuwa sasa kiongozi wa, wa Wayahudi so hapo tu the high priest alikuwa the de facto leader wa Wayahudi ijapokuwa sasa wao walikuwa na the religious system ambayo walikuwa wanaiendeleza. Na kwa hivyo Yesu wakati alipokuja wakaona ya kwamba ana interfere. So one of the things you must understand is that uh, the way the religious system was say, say that, uh, there was a lot of benefits the religious leaders were receiving. Kwa sababu kama wakati huu Yesu unajua wakati Yesu alisurubishwa it was around the Passover feast. And in Passover feast over 2 million Jews wangekuja Jerusalem kusherehekea hii sherehe ya Pasaka na wakija wangekuja na dhabihu za kutoa katika hekaru na hizi ndiyo dhabihu zilikuwa zinatajirisha hawa maku, huyu kuhani mkuu na wale wazee that is where they made their earning from so Yesu kuja kubadilisha hiyo ni kama alikuwa nafunga biashara yao ama mahali wali, walikuwa wanapata faida yao na kwa hivyo wakati Kaifas aliona ile hatua na njia Yesu anapita akasema he must die if you continue to read in the Matthew chapter 27 from verse 1 and verse 2 tunaona pale Kaifas mwenyewe ametumana na unajua waliweza kumhonga uh, uh, one of the uh, 11 disciples ili aweze kumsaliti Yesu Kristo ambaye huyo ni Judas ambaye aliweza kutumika. If you read in 27 from verse 1, early in the morning all the chief priests and the elders of the people came to the decision to put Jesus to death. So it was not Pilate who decided that Jesus would die. It is the chief priests and the elders they bound him. Read him away and handed him over to Pilate the governor so the chief priests and the elders his own the religious system walimchukua Yesu na waka decide huyu lazima tumuue kwa sababu akiendelea vile anaendelea ataharibu mambo yetu kwa hivyo nasema ya kwamba the greatest enemy of the kingdom of god is religion Ukiendelea kusoma we can jump to verse 19 tuone pirate alifanya nini number one aliambiwa na mke wake mtu huyu sijaribu kumguza nimesumbuliwa katika ndoto huyu ni mtu mtakatifu wa Mungu while pirate was sitting on the judge seat his wife sent him this message don't have anything to do with that innocent man for i have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him then verse 20 let's continue But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas 
and to have Jesus ex ex executed. Look at this. Go back to verse 20. But the chief priest and the elders, that is the Sanhedrin, yeah, the 71, they persuaded the crowd. They incited the people. And they told the people, ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Verse 21, which of the two do you want me to release to you? Ask, ask the governor. Barabbas, they answered, because they were already incited. Huh? What shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. Then Pilate, what did he do? When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting. Remember there is a lot of, for, of people now in Jerusalem because of the Passover peace, uh, feast. Uh, but that uh, uh, instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood. He said, it is your responsibility. What did they reply? All the people answered, let his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus frogged and handed him over to be crucified. So you can see what happened to Jesus. Huh? It was the religious system that was fighting him. And they said, you better give us a thief, a murderer. But for Jesus, let him go. We don't want him. He wants to change our religious system. He wants to take away our benefits. And they said, he must die. Sometimes when people don't want the kingdom, even in churches, it's because some of us, there is something we want to protect. It is an interest that we want to protect. Sometimes it may happen because we don't have knowledge. But there are some people who want to protect certain interests. And that is why they don't want the move of God. Because when God comes, he is going to bring change. He is going to overturn some of the things that gave people or the, 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 the religious um, system were taking benefit of the people. But God is going to come and overturn and change everything. And that is why people would like to stop the move of God. But I want to tell you, the end-time move of God is unstoppable. And there must be a people who are telling God, let your kingdom come. We break the chains of religion in the mighty name of Jesus. We desire the kingdom. It is only the kingdom that can transform people's lives. It is only the kingdom that can help us to change our lifestyle. And that is where God is taking the church. That is why Jesus said that before he comes back, Matthew 24, 14, where we have led, Jesus said, before I come back, there is a gospel that must be preached. And this is a gospel of the kingdom. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. So Jesus said, and this gospel of the kingdom Maybe some of you are asking, Kwani took on how many Gospels? Let me tell you, we have so many Gospels. There is a Gospel according to your church, which may not be necessarily the Gospel according to the kingdom. Let's see a few scriptures that helps us to understand this in a, in a better way, that we could be receiving a, a different kind of Gospel. Um, Paul said in Galatians chapter 1, Verse 8 and verse 9, he was telling Galatians, even if we or an angel comes and gives you another gospel, don't accept it. But even we, if, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let him be eternally condemned. As we have already said, so now I say again. If anybody is preaching to you a gospel 
other than what you accepted, let him be eternally condemned. Why is Paul very serious about protecting Galatians from receiving another gospel? And he is saying, even if we, because men can change. I know people who began very well. But in the course of time, they have changed. They have been perverted because of their greed. Uh, they have changed uh, the gospel because of their evil desires. They have changed uh, the gospel. So Paul said, even if we watch around and you are going to see people who began with a certain gospel, but today they are preaching another gospel. Now I want to be a tumerevuka. Paul Arizema had to taki yo mchezo. Had to taki yo ujinga. Hata kama ni sisi. Tutakuja. Tuseme ya kwamba. Tumebadirisha ile injiri ya kwanza. Musikubali. Na hata kama ni maraika. Paul alijua ya kwamba. Wakati mwingine shetani ya najifanya kama maraika wanuru. Hata mapepo inaweza kutokea kwa ndoto. Lakini inakuja kama maraika wanuru. Inakuhubiria injiri ya kuwa muke wapiri na utupe mke wako inakuhubiria injiri ama inakupatia maufunuo ambayo hairingani na injiri ya ufanne so Paul akasema may that person who changes this gospel be eternally condemned may god have mercy and deliver us from the preachers who rise and change the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ May we be aware that when you see somebody saying, I have changed from this to this, you must be aware. Hata kama ni mchungaji wako asemea ni mebadilisha sasa. Kwa ni alikuwa wapi? Razima uchunguze hiyo mabadiliko kama ni kwa wema. Sometimes people can change for good. But you can discern that sometimes people are changing to pervert the word for their own good, for their own benefit. Wanabadilisha. I thank God. Miaka hiyo te kuminanane mehubiri. Ni mehubiri injiri ya ufalme. Ni meambia watu. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all these other things that the heathen are running after them. They shall be added unto you. And I believe my gospel has passed the test of time. Because after seeking the kingdom. After leading people to seek the kingdom. After telling people, live a kingdom lifestyle. And observe the principles of this kingdom. Some of you, I have heard you, and I have seen you in the social media. Uh, giving testimonies that from the time I started following the church without walls, my life has changed. Why is your life changing? Because it is all about the gospel that you are receiving. Paul said... In the book of 2 Corinthians, if we can read very quickly, um, in chapter 11 and verse 4. Second Corinthians 11, for the Bible says, For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, that tells you, you could be receiving a gospel of another Jesus. So not everybody who is shouting the name of Jesus. The Bible says, test every spirit. And the Bible continues to say, or if you receive a different spirit, this spirit is not the spirit of God. It is another spirit because there are so many spirits at work. It doesn't have a capital S. Or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received. Or a different gospel. Look at this. Or a different gospel. From the one you accepted, you put up with it is enough. So Paul and our challenge, and our Lisa, why, you, why are you putting up easily with a different gospel from the one you accepted in the beginning? And you must be careful as a believer. Usiwe tu mtu kila wakati unapokea injiri mpia. Hey, sasa nimeambiwa, tutakuwa tunafanya hivi, tutakuwa tunakaa hivi. Na unabadirisha haraka. Razima uangalia kwamba you can receive a different spirit. 
You can be preached a different Jesus and you can receive a different gospel from the one that you received from the beginning. So, believer, be aware that there are so many types of gospel. But you have to choose the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom is the gospel of salvation. 